Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is my review of the Marten multi tool. You're at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. Welcome, one and all. Ah, uh, yes, you hear those birds in the background? This was filmed in the uh, early morning. All right, this multi tool was $16, and we're going to see if it's worth that price. Let's go through the tool set. It's got one handed opening on a plain edged knife blade, and that is a locking blade. It has a liner lock. It also has one handed opening on a wood saw. And that saw also locks. We're definitely going to put it to some good use in this video. It's got your typical multi-tool pliers, which are combination pliers with wire cutters. It has a pocket clip. The shorter tools are outboard tools. They do not lock, but they have a back spring. There's your bottle opener with screwdriver end and wire bending notch. And it's got a file, an extra short file. It's a two-sided file. And it's got a can opener with a wire stripping notch. On the other side, it has a reamer, which can also be used as an awl, but it does not have the uh, sewing hole. And that ring there is a fold out lanyard hole. It also has a Phillips screwdriver. That's always handy to have with you. So that is the tool set. It does not have a serrated blade. It does not have scissors. And the file is only a half length file. All right, so it's more of a minimalist tool set, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker. I mean, my Leatherman rebar does not have scissors either, but it's still an awesome multi-tool. So for this price, we can definitely work with this uh, minimalist tool set. Here is the belt sheath that it did come with. It has a belt loop on the back and it has a snap closure on the front and it's pretty sturdy. All right, let's go do things with this, starting off with an easy task. There it is peeling an apple. Now this blade shape, because of the curve of it, it's pretty good for slicing. And because of the forward tip, it's good for draw cutting, such as uh, when you're opening a package or something like that. It's not specifically that good a shape for a paring knife, but if you were out in the field and that's what you had, then that's what you would use. All right, so it did the apple pretty well. All right, a tougher task, drawing it down a piece of wood, some woodwork, some whittling. This is for the bushcrafters out there. So this multi-tool gives you the typical uncomfortable grip that any multi-tool would when you're using it like this because you're basically using it the way you would use like a bushcraft fixed blade but a knife is going to have a rounded much more comfortable handle than a multi-tool will but on the positive side i have to say uh, this multi-tool is very strongly constructed it's very stout because i applied a lot of force to that blade I have tested some inexpensive multi-tools before that would fail at this exact same task because they would just start, the blade would actually start bending backwards at the pivot, right? But not so with this one. This one really managed to stand up against a lot of force. Another thing I noticed, this thing came pretty sharp because that wood was excessively dry and kind of gnarly, uh, but this was able to take off some good slivers and uh, whittle through it eventually. There, we're, you see, we're making good progress on our anti-vampire stake. You know, those blood suckers, man. You, get, you gotta have some protection these days. A tool like this that is inexpensive but pretty reliable is great for a spare kit or as a backup or as a gift or just to keep in your glove box. I never suggest replacing like your surge or something like that with a cheapo tool. I'm certainly not going to, but it's a great backup. All right, we finished our steak. I put it with all the others waiting for those blood suckers. Here is some usage of the saw. It's a very aggressive saw. The teeth point backwards towards you, kind of like shark's teeth. So it's very vicious, uh, especially on the pull. All right, you see we made a groove in that piece of wood. I did speed this footage up a little bit just for time purposes, but there we are making another groove in this piece of wood. And that wood is a lot uh, drier and harder than a green sapling would be. All right, we made two grooves. Whatever can we do with them? More blade work connecting those uh, grooves to make a big wide notch. But yeah, like I was saying, a multi-tool like this, I see it as a complement or a backup to a lot more pricier multi-tools. Right, just like my Kershaw Brawler, it was $8 and it has its uses. It doesn't mean it's going to replace my ZTs. All right, we made two notches. Now here it is coming up on paper after a little bit of touch-up.
All right, so very sharp, and that was only after about two minutes of touch-up. Here is some more usage of that saw. The spine of the saw came nice and sharp for all your scraping needs, and also great for striking a fire steel and producing sparks. I did have one commenter ask why I don't use, like, easier tinder, you know? Uh, the reason I don't use easier tinder is because it's a review, and you have to give it a little bit of a test. I mean using some super easy tinder would kind of be like cheating you know people want to see like if it can make some big sparks so that's why okay here is the most important the most crucial tool on this whole multi-tool yes it is the lanyard hole because we've all been sitting around thinking man i wish a lanyard hole would fold out of my multi-tool uh, no I'm, I'm just kidding uh it has a lanyard hole yeah well, you put it on the multi-tool, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate it. But uh, I don't know what else they could put in that slot, but there, there you go. We, we did put a lanyard on it. That was mainly for comic relief there. All right, back to business. The pliers, they are spring-loaded, right? and that is as wide as they do open. Yes, 1,001 uses for pliers. Okay, got some new wire. This is 18-gauge copper wire. This was specifically requested by a viewer that uh, has to cut this at his job so there you go I, I hope that gave you the info you needed it cut that wire very well here is some harder wire this is a, a three strand wire can it do it yes it can all right so you see it cut that although it did require a significant force to go through that you can also use the uh the little needle nose portion just to grip and manipulate things to to reach in to pull stuff out like that little uh, strand of wire. Uh, speaking of wire, it's got a wire stripping notch. Now that's, you know, I'm using my off hand, right? I'm using, used my right hand for that, but it, it, it seemed to work okay. All right, stripped some wire. And yet more stuff with wire. The bottle opener has a wire bending notch. And again, you can just use it to manipulate wire. Just helps you bend it. You can bend it into useful shapes, you know, uh, little hooks and loops, that sort of thing. Here's my Stanley utility knife with the snap-off blades. And I think you know what we're going to do. We're going to snap off the snap-off blade. All right, so there you go. You can grip things strongly. Uh, you can, of course, you can turn things, right? You can also just hold things in place. Kind of like you're a surgeon. It's kind of like your forceps, right? So, yeah, quite, quite a lot of uses for pliers like that. You could even use it to perhaps pull out a rusty nail, but I'm only doing that because, yes, we got to demonstrate this file. So as you can see, it's a very short file, so it, it has a, a, a limited uh, stroke, right? Push and pull stroke. In fact, it's easier just to hold the file there and just move the thing you're filing. I use a rusty nail so you can see the part that got filed. So that shiny part, there you go. So I'd say it's better than nothing. All right, here are the screwdrivers. It's got two screwdrivers, one at the end of the bottle opener, you see there, and pretty useful for adjusting the pivot screw on my Emerson Persian there. You see it's, it's all loose now. So only two screwdrivers. Uh, however, they are very useful uh, sizes and types of screwdriver. All right, so we adjusted the pivot, fine blade that, that Emerson. Oh yeah, speaking of the bottle opener, the most important part of any review, of course. Whoa, he's spilled some there, but uh, yeah, it does work. Works pretty well. Here's the other screwdriver. It's a Phillips screwdriver, and that is my Kershaw Camp 12 machete. A blade you will see in many of these reviews because multi-tools almost always have a screwdriver that fits the screws that hold the handle onto the tank. All right, so that's pretty useful. All right, we got a can opener. We got some tuna. I, I'm just going to pierce it to show you that it's sharp enough. But, you know, these days most cans have pop tops. It's not like when I was a kid, but so that's pretty retro. Uh, but there you go. It's well sharp enough to do its job. All right, the last thing we're going to demonstrate, the reamer. I did speed this footage up because it does take a while to uh, drill a hole by hand. One thing I noticed about this reamer, it was not quite as fast as some other ones that I've tried. So I think it's just because they didn't make it 
They didn't really make it very pointed, so I'm just going to modify it after this. I'm just going to make the tip a little more pointed so that it can kind of uh, pierce in better as it's being uh, uh, twisted and uh, pushed through. All right, so I think we can I can speed up that reamer with just a slight uh, making it slightly making it more pointed. So how are you all doing these fine days? You know, what brings you here? You realize you're basically just watching some guy you don't know in his backyard doing stuff with wood and with metal, essentially. Uh, but you're probably here because you're just sick and fed up with the mainstream. And I am definitely not mainstream. And this probably just cheers you up. You know, seeing tools in use, it's, it's relaxing. All right. So that reamer worked well. Put a hole there. Here's the Marten multi-tool next to the Krenak multi-tool that I previously reviewed. If you want to see that review, I'll include a link to it in the text description box. But the interesting thing about these multi-tools is that the smaller tools, the smaller fold-out tools are identical. Check that out. So most likely these were made by the same uh, manufacturer and they just kind of mix and match in different frames. The blades, however, are not identical. You see the different shapes there. And of course, for each blade shape, makes it better or worse for different tasks. Just also depends what you're doing and your preference. My final thoughts and conclusions on this Marten multi-tool. Do I feel it was worth the price? Uh, yes, I do, actually. I feel that $16 was a, a very fair price for this tool. You can definitely get a lot of uh, real use and work out of it. So I definitely think it was worth its low price and it, it's a good uh, budget-friendly multi-tool. Uh, the blade is one of the best parts. That blade shape, the curve of it, makes it good for slicing, slicing through, and the forward tip just lets you do a draw cut uh, with your wrist at a comfortable angle. So for example, uh, you know, opening packages, cutting boxes. The saw was handy and it was effective. It is a very aggressive saw, which uh, I would say is a good thing. And it's good that it has uh, that lock. And also it's nice that they made the spine nice and sharp for scraping and for striking. The pliers are also very useful. Uh, 1,001 uses for pliers, uh, turning, holding, uh, gripping, manipulating, cutting wire. So in conclusion, I definitely feel like I got my money's worth. And this would be a very good tool as a backup as a gift, as something to keep in a spare kit or a glove box. Again, you know, it, it's not going to replace my $100 multi-tool. I'm not suggesting that, so you don't have to defend your, your Surge. I love the Surge. Uh, but for, again, for something to keep in your glove box, I mean, I'm not going to keep a super expensive multi-tool just in a spare kit somewhere. I'm going to keep it on me, use it every day. So for that backup, you know, like I said, Tools like this are very complementary to your frontline primary tools. Now, if you want to pick one of these up, or maybe you want another budget multi-tool with a little bit of a different tool set, check out the text description box. I will include useful links for your convenience, my updated master list of budget-friendly multi-tools. If you liked this video, consider subscribing. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.